Hello everyone, and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat. If you have been enjoying the tutorials thus far, please be sure to do all the social stuff below the video. You can, of course, support Pyanodon's Mods development at patreon.com slash Pyanodon and myself at patreon.com slash Otaku Showboat if you would like. So, today we are going to be discussing logistic science. Green science, as I tend to call it. It's, it's green. It's totally a sample slide, like a slide to put under a microscope. That's, that's what this icon is, and it has just that little strip of green on it, so it's green science. Uh, and we're going to go into all of the intricacies involved with getting green science today. Oh boy. The science itself is only two ingredients. Uh, it does need to be made in a research center just like with the automation science, red science. Uh, it will require poor alien samples as well as laboratory instruments. The laboratory instruments require you to have circuits I have not broken down the circuits in this particular production line, or production block. Really, it's, uh, it's the block, but we've got another block, so it's a line. I have broken that down in a separate Circuit 1 video uh, that you can also watch. I did an updated video uh, for that as well. You can find that somewhere in whatever playlist you should be watching this through. <clears throat> So, you can refer back to the Circuit 1 tutorial as well, but we'll get into a few of the intricacies involved with that as well, That because they apply to uh, green science. Basically, if you have circuit automation, you're pretty much done. There's very little else that you need to do to actually set up your green science once you actually have set up your circuits. And we'll get to the few additional things shortly here that you will need to set up in addition to uh, your automated circuit one production. So we can see here that lab instruments will need engine units, which you likely have by now, some uh, engine units. You will also need equipment chassis, as well as optical sets rubber, uh, and small parts. I do hope that by this point you absolutely have small parts. They are iron and copper, and it was likely the first thing that you started to automate once you got automation at Red Science. So, from here, engine units. The recipe that I have here for engine units is one that uses rubber belt because it is a significantly faster recipe, for one, and it's cheaper on the material cost, but you will need to set up Duralumin. You, you will need to set up Duralumin, and you can only do it, of course, after you have rubber for that belt. This is something you're going to want to do anyway, uh, because there's an upgraded version of the standard yellow belt, yellow logistic belts, that use these rubber belts, and it gives you like 15 of the yellow belts, or 10 of the yellow belts, something along those lines. I think it's actually 10 of the yellow belts for the single craft, but I, I don't know, I can look it up. I can look it up. It's added in by petroleum handling. It is not available to me with this mode. Why? Anyway, regardless, if I go into gear, and I do uh, the, the looking for that recipe, right here we have 15, so it is 15 belts, that use 5 belt, rubber belt, as well as iron and small parts. This ends up being cheaper uh, to make belts as well as faster, cheaper and faster, and there's going to be versions of the inserters that use the belt as well as the engine units. So all of this stuff as well as the upgraded belts are all going to get nice 
rubber belt recipes that you can use, so you will absolutely want to have rubber belt. We'll get to rubber shortly. The equipment chassis uh, requires Duralumin, so no matter what, no matter what to get into uh, green science here, you're going to need Duralumin. Also to get into circuits, by the way, you're going to need your Duralumin as well as the tin that you've probably had forever at this point. The optical sets. The optical sets are made in glass works, which means you need to supply the molten glass. Hope you have a solution to that. There is the hot air casting that gives you 25% more. Uh, in this case, it's twice the output, uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, because it rounds up. Uh, so instead of getting one out, you get two out uh, for this recipe. You have to feed it some sort of a gas with fuel value, whatever gas with fuel value you so choose, uh, and you need to throw boron trioxide at this recipe. Uh, this recipe is very similar to a glassware recipe, an upgraded glassware recipe that you will get access to at some point. It's very similar to the upgraded glassware uh, recipe, so you might want to consider doing those two things together wherever you're doing them because they share a boron trioxide molten glass hot air and syngas they, they like share all mo like the vast majority of the inputs for them uh with the exception of course that the glassware also needs rubber stoppers um anyway the boron trioxide will need coke in a high pressure furnace with boric acid the boric acid of course is from diborane and from Borax from raw borax. I have a video discussing the entirety of the borax processing chain if you aren't already aware of that. Rubber. So, at Red Science, before Green Science, before you get into your Green Science, this is the whole point we're getting into our Green Science. Rubber is one to one latex into rubber, which is really, 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 really bad for you uh, at this phase of the game. Latex is incredibly expensive. You can see latex on the red science video, the automation science video, uh, because that's what you initially need latex for, is to get into red science. Now you need more of it well, you need it. You need it for the for the glassware, of course. You need it to you need it to make the stoppers, the rubber stoppers, for the glassware. Well, now you need the latex to actually make real rubber, and you're never going to be able to get around this in the pie suite. You're always going to need some amount of latex for rubber. There are future recipes that you can use to make rubber that have a much better ratio of latex into rubber but for right now you only have access to this one recipe for rubber that is one to one now it is up to you what you want to do with the production of latex to get into rubber uh, as to how you want to scale it just keep in mind you're going to need a bunch of latex for this uh, as you go on. I'm not breaking latex down in this video because I already broke it down in the red science video. Go back there to see just exactly why this can be a bit of a problem for you. It's, uh, it's a lot of infrastructure to build this, and it's a lot of iron and copper plates that ultimately go into this at this phase of the game, uh, at least until you can reasonably, reasonably slaughter Vrauk to get formic acid. That's not going to happen reasonably until far later into the game. Now you also need carbon black and you also need polybutadiene to make your rubber. The carbon black, you have two options, either to make it out of tar or out of crude oil. Uh, it's the same amount of fluid of choice no matter what you do. Uh, and the same number of buildings, it's just 
one recipe is twice as fast as the other recipe, but uses half the resources. It makes them, like, effectively identical to each other. I don't know why uh, it's like that, but in this case, I've gone with the crude oil because in a standard pie game, chances are you're going to have access to crude oil, and tar is likely more limiting to you on a standard pie game than crude oil. But uh, really, just use whatever you have available to you at the given point in time to make your carbon black. You do need hot air for this recipe. I feel, I feel a kitten at my feet. It's it's an ollie. Uh, so the hot air is required. I'll leave it up to you what you want to do with the hot air. But for right now, uh, just think of hot air as stone bricks, as stone. So. Stone to stone bricks to hot air. Lots of it, granted. Lots of it to get this much hot air for the amount of rubber that you need, but that's likely going to be the only method you will be considering at this phase of the game. Yes, you will have access to uh, do a Coke oven gas, warm stone brick recipe, but I wouldn't really recommend setting that up for this if you have access to stone for stone bricks. As long as, long as you have access to, to stone for stone bricks to make the hot air, do that rather than, uh, rather than this. And then of course vacuum is free, it's just place down the, uh, the pumps, the, the pressure pumps, or as the, in the code it's called vacuum pumps. Uh, so just place those down. It's a, it's a lot of those vacuum pumps, by the way. 116.7 vacuum is a lot of them. It is uh, precisely 12 of them. They each do 10 per second with the Mark I uh, pressure pumps uh, for vacuum. Now, polybutadiene uh, is a titanium expense. So if you haven't set up titanium by now, you have to set up titanium. Uh, and you need a supply of aromatics. I gave here an example of how to get your aromatics for this at this point. Uh, this, in this case, to uh, make them out of creosote, out of tar, assuming you have access to tar. Now, that covers the lab instruments. Chances are, if you have circuits automated, already set up all of the infrastructure for lab instruments because you need urea to make circuit ones which means you're probably already set up with augs if you've already automated your circuits which means you've set up which means that you have cDNA, which means that you, you you have all the stuff to make the augs and the Vrauk to make the augs, so you likely have some bootstrap setup that gives you lab instruments for all of that that goes into the circuits. It's a little weird because, yes, you will have to manually feed some circuits before you can actually automate your circuits because they use a thing that uses circuits. Yeah, it's odd. So chances are you probably already have all this if you have your circuits set up going into this. Uh, so that would leave you with needing to make the poor alien samples. So the poor alien samples require a biological sample, a ground sample, and a bio sample. Completely separate, different thing. Uh, biological samples and bio samples. They're two completely separate concepts entirely. They're totally, completely separate concepts. The biological sample uh, requires bone meal plus incubated petri dishes plus Rilesia seeds. We've already seen incubated petri dishes back at Red Science. I'm not going to cover that today. The Bone meal, though, that's a little bit more complicated, as is the Rilesia. 
However, before we get to that, let's get the easy stuff out of the way first. The ground samples are rich clay and soil. Soil is free. Rich clay is tar or ash. I have I have tar listed here just as my method of choice initially because I don't really have uh, at this phase of the game a consistent supply of ash, but you can of course get consistent supplies of ash uh, pretty simply at red science if you're doing uh if you're doing tar to coal gas to sin gas then yeah you have ash that is a byproduct of that if you um <clears throat> void the excess amount of uh sin gas that you're making out of that then you have a consistent supply of ash that you can use to make your rich clay but it is a pretty significant amount of ash uh, to make the amount of rich clay that you need uh, in the end. The bio samples require a mined resource. This is a mined resource from uh, these bio reserves that are on the map. Let's see if I can uh, find a bio reserve on this map here. I have I have caught an Ollie. Hello. Yes, you're you're squirmy. I know you want to explore. Go explore. That that's Ollie. He's he has come to say hello. Uh, bio reserve. Where is the a example of a bio reserve on this map? I don't. Ah, here, right here. This this little thing right here. This is a bio reserve. The this guy with all the colorful plants all the colorful plants that's your bio reserve you need a collector you need a collector in order to actually mine these things it looks a little bit like that the collector runs on fuel the fuel is bio containers uh, now in this particular case i just want to make this clear this says 1.43 bio containers into two uh, bio samples. This is only because in this particular setup here, I have text. I have all the text unlocked for this editor mode to show all the stuff. At that phase of red science, you don't have mining productivity yet. This is only an effect caused by mining productivity. It is going to be one to one the bio containers to bio samples one to one so that's going to be in order to get two bio samples per second two steel two glass two lead and four titanium or three titanium i i i forget it's going to be a lot a lot of stuff lots of stuff lots lots of really major metals and glass really major stuff lots and lots of really major 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 stuff uh is involved here so pretty expensive that's going to be your main limiting factor towards green science i'm pretty sure is just your ability to mine bio samples and these get used pretty ubiquitously throughout pi alien life content so Good luck! Uh, good luck is all I can really say. Uh, mining productivity does help. You do get a boost with mining productivity. You also get a boost when you get access to efficiency modules. Efficiency modules. This is a fuel. And the collectors operate at a specific rate. Uh, and therefore, if you make them more efficient they will use less fuel per cycle which improves the ratio of bio containers into bio samples it makes it a heck of a lot cheaper to mine bio samples the later you get into the game and the better module tech you have access to and the better modules you have access to efficiency is ideal because you can get up to negative 80% power use on those buildings. But you will also want, once you have beacons, you will want to start to do a bit of a trade-off uh, between 
keeping that negative 80%, but also sneaking in as much speed as you possibly can while also trying to keep it at negative 80%, because that's another way of improving the output. The speed of a building is independent of its power draw, in essence. Uh, so if you can make a building go fast, operate faster, while also reducing its power draw to negative 80% of the base value, then you're going to also end up with a heck of a lot of value out of that uh, going into uh, bio containers to bio samples, that ratio of containers to samples. Uh, so if you're using Bob's modules and you have the raw modules enabled, you can absolutely do beautiful things with this and make it just at a, an extremely good ratio of uh, containers into bio samples by making them operate many, 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 many times per second uh, per bio container getting used every few seconds. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty nice, the things that you can get away with with Bob's modules. But if you're using the null modules, then you will have to do that back and forth between the uh, the speed uh, the speed change by having your modules as well as the energy change by having all of that. So energy and speed, just getting getting those in balance to keep as low energy as possible uh, usage, while also getting it to be as fast as possible at that negative eighty percent. So with that said. <laughs> Let's move on. Bone meal. At green science, you do not have Ulrich yet. Or at, at red science, you do not have Ulrich yet. At green science, you will get Ulrich. That'll be a better source of getting bone meal. Ulrich are your best option to get bone meal going into at, at green science. But you don't have them yet, and you can't make them yet until green science. So your only real option here is going to be augs. That's your only real option. Uh, technically, you have the option to convert bones into bone meal, but how are you going to get bones? Right? It's augs. You're, you're going to get bones from augs. You don't get bones from brauk, and you don't have any other animals to deal with under normal circumstances with a standard pie game. In pie block, you have fish, obviously, and you could theoretically do fish bones into bone meal, adding steam, but we're just going to leave that to the side. It's also a really huge setup. I'm still going to say augs anyway uh, for that. Uh, so, yeah, bone meal will have to come from augs initially in a temporary setup, which means you need augs. You already have augs, most likely, if you have already set up your circuit ones, because you need the urea, you're probably getting your urea out of aug manure. You need to add more augs, uh, unfortunately, and you do need to make the caged augs that you will slaughter into bone meal. Same deal with Relesia. Chances are you have no Relesia whatsoever at this point, so you will need to make your initial Relesia and scale it up significantly. Fortunately, Relesia is pretty free. It's just water. You can sp split hydrogen off of, uh, off of water. Uh, and of course, soil is just add water, get soil, just place machines, and use power. It's Relesia is super simple. It's just that uh, you need to get your first Relesia. And it's a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, so here, in this production block, in case you weren't aware, is how to get into Augs and Relesia. It's just, don't think of this as amount per second. Let's just make that clear. This particular thing is not amount per second. This is amount total that you need. Like, the number of cycles, basically, that you would want to do uh, for these. Um, though I did say three, and it's more like five on the on the release yeah something along those lines so the tricky part about release yeah, is that the recipe to make 
the Relesia seeds needs five Relesia. Plus, you need a Relesia to actually make, like, use as a module. So you need a Relesia as a module plus five to start your seed cycle going. A Relesia plus five to make the, make the seed cycle go. Now, this particular recipe is where is this one? It gives you two Relesia per cycle. You need exactly six. You need exactly six. So there you go. That's the total number of ingredients that you will need in order to make your Relesia. And just for reference, if you haven't set up your augs yet, you will need to get an initial aug uh, to work towards this. Uh, that is going to need its own codex, bare DNA samples, generic samples. You need those bio samples set up, and you will need cDNA. You will need cDNA. Uh, the Relesia codex and the aug codex are identical recipes. Basically, you need to throw circuits at them and lamps and glass and tinned cable, which is tin and copper cable. Uh, you need the flower DNA samples from data arrays. Just ignore the values over here because this is trying to give you per second. Just think of this as total values. You'll need a bunch of red science uh, to make each of these different samples uh, in three separate data arrays or just one that you cycle uh, and change the recipes on. Uh, some steel chests, additional codexes, codices. Let's actually make matrix solver to show the, the total code codices that you need. Um, and lots of bio samples, lots, 150 total units of bio samples to get all the stuff in here on this list anyway. Huh. That'll, that'll be your samples. The cDNA though, yeah, the cDNA, the problem with that is that it requires rock cocoons, uh, so it's glassware, which you have. Hey, it's lab instruments. It's lab instruments to get these. Good thing you already have lab instruments, right? Uh, as well as basic substrate from Red Science, as well as the incubated Petri dishes, also from Red Science, effectively Red Science. We've got, we've got glassware plus basic substrate, plus additional Petri dishes, which are incubated Petri dishes, which are an ingredient of the basic substrate. So we've got basically Red Science, plus lab instruments, plus biosamples, plus MOS gene samples, plus plasmids, plus retrovirus. The MOS gene samples are just a whole bunch of moss with glassware. Like, they're trivial as long as you have the glassware. The plasmids, though, those are also going to take lab instruments, additional lab instruments, plus glassware, plus more incubated petri dishes, plus zogna bacteria. And the retrovirus, oh boy, that stuff is steel, glassware, lab instruments, vrouk cocoons, and regular petri dishes with hot air. Uh, the zogna is going to use a whole bunch of wood and lamps and petri dishes, with some pressured air, it's relatively simple. My issue with Zogna bacteria in and of itself is that it is using metals for the lamps. I don't like having to spend metal for a biotic thing. I, it, I, I don't like it as much, but hey, sure. The lamp is basically a fuel, by the way. It's like it, it's incubating the Zogna with the lamps. I... I, uh, I I don't like it. I I've I've never liked the lamp expense in here. Uh, and you are you are literally blowing air over wood and incubating the l amount of bacteria from blowing the wood onto dishes. You're you're incubating the stuff as blown from wood onto the dishes. That's the zogna. That's zogna, by the way. It's it's some wood bacteria that you're incubating and you're blowing it off of the wood and then incubating it uh so the vrouk well the vrouk cocoons are going to come from vrouk it's going to be a bunch of biomass and sap and moss it's really easy to grow them the issue is you need to actually get them in the first place to use as modules and that of course also means that you'll have to grow them in a creature chamber from a cocoon from the 
or from the from the codex, excuse me. From the codex, same deal with the codex as up here. It's the same, basically the exact same ingredients. For the codex, you got more generic DNA samples that you have to deal with, which means you will need biosamples, and you will need biosamples before you can do all this. Uh, and once you have all that set up for the Vralk and you have your cocoons, uh, don't forget you have to start by making caged Vralk, which is a very similar recipe, just instead of sap, it's cages. That's that's the replacement there. The the cages get replaced by sap once you're making cocoons, but you sort of need to have the all of the modules that you need to set up your Vralk to get the Vralk cocoons. There's a there's a kitten playing with something nearby, making noises. So once you've done all of that and done this incredibly long thing, which you may have already done if you already have your circuits automated, uh, and the only thing that you need to do left would be the Relesia stuff, then you'll have every biotic thing necessary to go into your green science, and you will have green science, because you will have poor alien samples. A few additional caveats. Uh, you're going to need a lot more poor alien samples in the grand scheme of things than you just need to use for logistic science. These samples, they get used for quite a lot of things. They get used for quite quite a lot of things. You will need them for pie science, actual pie science. You will need them for the upgraded alien samples, the good and the great alien samples. Uh, you need them for the first version of several additional biotic items. Several additional ones, including Kickalk. Including Kickalk, you will need these for alien samples, which is why I generally have recommended not going into Kickalk to use for your raw fiber for the circuit production because these use poor alien samples and if you have poor alien samples and handcrafted lab instruments for everything else for the circuit production you're at green science already like you are at green science at that point you're not technically at red science anymore you have the complete capacity to be handcrafting green science at that point. So I consider Kickalk to be green science, not red, because it's like, by the time you have all the stuff to make this, you are you are green science uh, already. Uh, and of course, uh, all these all these other doohickeys as well. Uh, and they are used in logi science packs. So the big the big ones, the, the good alien samples get used for a whole bunch of other biotic stuff, as are the great alien samples used for a whole bunch of other biotic stuff and to get into sciences themselves. So you need to have a good, good, solid supply of poor alien samples in excess of what you need of getting the green science. Green science can also be made uh, and is used in several other things. Green science is used in several DNA samples of various things. Uh, and it's used to do that brain biocomputing for chemical science as well as production science. Chances are you're not really going to be thinking about doing that brain production science for a good long while, considering especially that it uses pi science and special small parts. It's that special small parts that's going to be your limiting factor on that bat brain biocomputing for purple science, just by the way, because that's super steel and aerogel to get into special small parts. The fetal serum is trivial by that point. Uh, but yeah, just just so as you're aware, that doesn't come until really late. Really late. But chemical science packs through bat brain broad computing are absolutely viable. And you'll be able to do them basically as soon as you get brains and feel serum. Um, which is pretty easy. Just more augs. More augs slaughtering for their brains. Slaughter the augs for their brains and you will be good. And fetal serum is guts plus silver, so... Once you have silver, plus guts, again, you can do that from augs. Augs to give their guts and their brains, and the 
silver to make the fetal serum with the with the guts and there there you go chemical science packs through that brain biocomputing it consumes some of your red and green science to make a single chemical science it's a really bad ratio but it gives you a trickle which is all you really need considering how long it takes to actually build your base uh, in the pie suite so keep all of that in mind but there are also multiple ways of getting into green science Besides just that, there is its own VatBrain biocomputer recipe to get into green science. I would not recommend doing this. It's, like, grand scheme of things. Green science is really simple to get into by comparison to what comes after it. Uh, I would personally never consider doing the VatBrain logic science. Just, just no. Just no. Now we've got, we have our normal method. There is the really late game thing i don't use this i'd rather have space science than any of these uh, and there are cotton guts i will just mention that cotton guts exist as a way of getting into logi science theoretically they're supposed to improve their output with increasing tech but apparently that needs to be looked at and rebalanced and all that in the current state of the game so just don't just don't for now uh, just don't with the cotton guts, especially since there is going to be an overhaul of the balance on the cotton gut sciences uh, eventually. Just eventually. Lots of lots of work being done on the high suite as we speak uh, for lots of new features as well as then balances for the things that are currently imbalanced or not working quite as intended. Not balanced as intended. So, with all of that said... On this relatively short tutorial that is over 35 minutes long at this point, 36, 37 minutes long at this point, I would like to thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been Otaku Showboat. If you have enjoyed this tutorial and this series thus far, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff below the video. You can, of course, support Pinedon's Mods Development at patreon.com slash Pyanodon, and myself at patreon.com slash otakushiabout if you are so inclined. I will, of course, see you all on the next one.